Welcome to the Leading at the Next Level podcast with Dove Development and Consulting, the show build to provide ongoing support for your leadership journey. Now, before we start on today's session, let's make sure that we're on the same page. We've seen firsthand how much more is required to provide authentic leadership to a team than to simply manage based on the authority that comes with a title or a position. What we've learned through more than 50 combined years of leadership responsibility is that taking the extra steps to serve people and earn influence will always produce results that barking orders never will. Now, if you'll stick with us to the end of the episode, we'll share how you can get a complimentary trial to a resource that we've built that's like nothing else you've ever seen. Now, with that in mind, let's get to work. Let's pick up on what we closed on the last episode, and we're going to look now at recognizing the need for more accountability. If we want to avoid those costs, that pile up when nobody is held accountable, and we want to capture that profit that's often killed as a result, far too often, the first step is is realizing it's even a problem. Now, before you tune me out here, I'm not an invi- I'm not inviting you to go to an AA meeting. I tell people I was never an alcoholic because I didn't go to meetings. Um, but when there's a leadership issue, gosh, it's anything but an out- anonymous. So it's not along the, that vein anyway. And that said, recognizing the need for more accountability can often be tougher when it's substance abuse or anything like that, right? So I found an article um, from a, a somewhere called Pareto Labs. It was called How to Identify Lack of Accountability in Your Team. And in parentheses, it said, and what to do. The author from that shares that in a team that lacks accountability, work is subpar and often late. No one takes responsibility for their actions, leading to poor outcomes across the board. Went on to list five areas that suffer from that lack of accountability. The author referenced low quality work, decreased productivity, high turnover, disengaged employees, and low morale. Now, I think that's a pretty solid list. In fact, I think it looks a lot like the profitability killers we've been working through in this process. Now, here's where you're like likely thinking, wait a minute, Wes, I thought you said a lack of accountability can be tough to realize. You're probably thinking any one of those things should jump right out of the leader, any leader that's paying even the slightest bit of attention. And I'd say you're right if they all showed up at the same time and and that the, the accountability started to drop or any one of them made a significant impact right off the bat. Um, Gosh, I would say it would absolutely grab most leaders attention. The challenge is that each of those issues start off small, but they compound quickly as they build one upon another, right? And and what begins as a minor issue could very well be due to legitimate reasons, but it snowballs. Now, when we let the issue slide that one time, but that level of performance now becomes the new standard, not necessarily on paper, but but it's definitely becoming the new standard in the, in the minds of the individual performing it, as well as the folks that's watching. Now, a while back in this program, I shared a lesson that was called How Leaders Show Value by Being Responsive. And in that lesson, I, I gave two separate examples of conversations that I had on the very same morning with, with two different friends, both of which were really high performers in their respective organizations. And they were both extremely frustrated with, with the executives that, that they each reported directly to. Um, in both cases, the expectation for responsiveness to both internal and external communication was clearly defined in, and, and it was tied to each of their organization's values. So again, different organizations, different in, individuals. The rub each of them had was that their immediate manager barely responded to them at all, and the responses that they did receive were nowhere close to being within the time frame that that the organization, that that company had set and, and really defined as their guideline internally and externally. Now, just tie that back, um, just like that, that lack of accountability that I mentioned, I highly doubt that this poor responsiveness, it became their standard practice overnight. However, the behavior became ingrained when those executives weren't um, didn't see a consequence. And, and quite frankly, with with the executives, but also with the teams reporting to them, it was gradual. Everything tends to drift. It's just not boom. It's terrible overnight. Things fall backward. The same would apply if you've got children and so on. Now, there's been many times where I've been extremely frustrated with something 
And, and Cindy's talked me down by emphasizing how somebody does one thing is typically how they do everything. And, and she, she goes on to say, hey, whoever got under your skin probably had no intention of putting you off. They likely do the same thing to everybody. And, and here's the thing. Time after time after time, she's been 100% correct. As we've seen it play out with the individuals, how they interact with other people. It's not just me they're doing it to. So when I'm angry, shame on me for letting it get under my skin. How we do one thing is how we do everything. And, and that's where that accountability kind of spills over. Now, with it being as simple as being slow to respond to an email, whether it's simple like that or it's how we deliver on a big project, the contributing behavior will continue when there's that lack of accountability and, and the frequency only increases, right? And sooner or later, it's going to show up in each of those five areas that I just referenced from, from that article, but, but not before habits are likely instilled in the individuals, right? And, and this becomes um, begins to become part of the culture and it's going to kill even more profitability. And there's going to be some very visible signs in how the supervisors and managers in, interact with their teams. And quite frankly, how those teams respond when we've got all those things going on. Not so long ago, again, in the same leading at the next level program, um, <clears throat> I put together a lesson uh, that that was called "Don't Confuse Quiet Quitting with a Lack of Leadership." Now, not only in that lesson did I emphasize the idea that quiet quitting was far um, far from being something new, I did my best to step on as many toes as I possibly could because I stated that the responsibility for it ever happening at all falls on the shoulder of whoever supervising or managing anybody that's been accused of that. Everything rises and falls on leadership. And just in case I didn't alienate enough people with that statement, I went on to say how weak I thought somebody was in a leadership role who would um, who would ever consider engaging in the practice that's often referred to now as quiet firing. Now, um, I was so direct with both of those because I was really attempting some shock and awe. I was hoping it would grab attention. And, and believe it or not, I wasn't really intending to piss everybody off in that particular situation or everybody that ever works through the lesson. But quite honestly, I struggle to imagine why any leader would ever intentionally allow quiet quitting to, to kind of permeate and filter through their team. And I, and I absolutely refuse to refer to somebody that practices anything vaguely resembling that quiet firing as a leader. They're not. They might have a, a title. They might be a supervisor manager, but they're not leading if that's the, the, the way they're going to treat their teams. Now, with those things out in the, the open, with those, that, that kind of refresher, if you will, I want to make one more statement. Neither of those things, quiet quitting or quiet firing, should be common in an organization where there's a strong culture of accountability. Now, here's what you're likely thinking. You're thinking, fair enough, Wes, if that's true, why do either of those terms even exist? Simply put, both are symptoms of not recognizing the need for more accountability. I think it's really that simple. Now, addressing it, not as simple, but I think that's really where it stems from. The folks who um, who we've seen referred to over the last year, two, three, whatever, as those quiet quitters. Um, they're, in fact, the, the group that we've looked at before through this process when we talked about the cost of not engaged employees and so on. But, but Gallup, in their 2022 State of the Global Workforce report, they said it was close to 60% or so. And they referred to them as being just along for the ride, creating drag for those who were rowing the boat forward. Now, while I've seen that number vary between 50 and 60 percent of the of organizations over recent years, the group in the middle of the boat that, that that so often get referred to as quiet quitters has consistently made up the majority of the overall workforce. And, and it doesn't have to be that way. It's not that hard to fix. If we just take a couple of, of steps to set clear expectations, like we talked about in the last lesson I shared in this program, and we maintain even a reasonable level of accountability, nearly everybody around us is going to perform to meet those expectations. It's only when accountability falters that people slip into that subpar routine. And, and, and as that cycle perpetuates itself, we shouldn't at all be surprised by half of our employees creating that drag that, that the Gallup poll um, referenced. Now, to compound what's often an innocent miss by the management team due to fighting those other fires that are going on, there are indeed times where somebody in a leadership role chooses to avoid holding um, their folks accountable for whatever reason, and they slip in into those behaviors uh, that, that make up fire, quiet firing. Now, 
I know I wouldn't rally around somebody that's doing that. And I'm guessing you wouldn't either. So even more profit in that area of the business is going to get killed by not addressing it, by allowing those things to go on. Now, I'm going to stress again, this rarely happens quickly, and the issues nearly always build gradually. That's what, what makes this very, very slippery slope so dangerous. Now, regaining control, building account of accountability back in into the culture, I don't believe it's all that difficult. And, and we're going to look at some simple steps that we can take to do that shortly. But first, we need to make sure that we're prepared to address any issue appropriately. We can't take the wrong approach by using too much candor or too much care. So I'm going to challenge you to think back to when we were kids, okay? Think about the story of Goldilocks and the three bears. I can't remember exactly how she got into their house or even why she was in the area, but I do remember little Goldilocks was tired and she needed a nap. So um, as she's trying each bed in the place, she found Papa Bear's bed was too hard. And Mama Bear's bed was too soft and, and Baby Bear's bed, gosh, it was just right. Now, here's where you're probably thinking, okay, Wes, you've gone completely nuts. Hold still. If you really think about it, how we handle some of those tougher conversations that we need to have around accountability should truly be more like Baby Bear's bed. But all too often, they end up being way too hard or way too soft and either can make that slope, that slippery slope that we're sliding down exponentially more slippery and exponentially more costly for us. And again, I, I don't want you to be convinced I'm off my rocker. I want you to understand that our, count, our, our conversations around accountability, if we want them to be effective, we need to be very, very intentional about how we balance the candor necessary to accurately define the issue with the kind of care that assures our team members of their value to us, as well as to the organization as a whole. Now, let's be very honest with each other here. This can be one of the toughest skills for any leader to develop. A CEO, a supervisor, manager, I don't care what the title is, any leader can struggle with it. And quite frankly, it's one of the most common things that Cindy and I help entire groups with. Now, again, in this Leading at the Next Level program, if you think back a little bit, we built two lessons specifically for that. The one I initially wrote was called The Power of a Candid Conversation. Cindy followed shortly after that with one called How Leaders Improve Results by Balancing Candor with Care. Um, mine detailed the importance of having conversations um, uh, and, and how it impacts the overall numbers in a business. And hers provided a step-by-step -step guide that, that I believe any leader can use to really prepare themselves for that conversation. Now, those two have been received so well in this program that we've since been able to tailor it into workshops that we've done with leadership teams in several different organizations. And the overall message that we, we deliver is that many people lean, lean too hard on one, um, one way or the other. Well, not necessarily on purpose, attempting to maintain that high level of accountability by using too much care, gosh, that can easily be misunderstood as accepting the behavior that's actually not meeting expectations um, because we didn't address it firmly enough. And, and I've seen this, um, this frequently be the case when the supervisor or the manager was pe um, previously a peer and they've got good relationships, so they're trying hard um, to, to, to avoid alienating those relationships. They, they try to make sure that that tough conversation is a little bit softer and they're concerned about hurting the person's feelings and so on. On the other end of the spectrum, though, I've seen managers or supervisors, whatever, who, who haven't really built those relationships with the team for whatever reason, be it new, be it they don't care, whatever. Um, those can easily be perceived as being far too candid, like they're, say, swatting a fly off somebody's forehead with a hammer. Um, so that should give you a decent visual. Um, the best accountability, though, it comes when there's that healthy balance between the two. And um, we've heard John Maxwell share it this way. He said, "Candor with that, I'm sorry, care without candor creates dysfunctional relationships. Candor without care creates distant relationships. But care balanced with candor creates developing relationships. I'm going to say that again because I think it's that powerful. Care without candor creates dysfunctional relationships. Candor without care creates distant relationships, but care balanced with candor creates developing relationships. Now, Cindy has the opportunity. She, she has conversations with, with Mark Cole, the CEO of Maxwell Leadership. He's purchased the companies from John, and, and she was talking with him about this, and not so long ago, he told her, he said it this way. He said, caring values the person while candor values the person's potential. 
And, and as they talked, they really landed on the, the idea that when we learn to blend the two, as we take steps to maintain that high level of accountability, that plays a critical role in how we, we can address that in an organization and how it ultimately helps take care of this profitability killer that we're working through here. Thanks for listening to the Leading at the Next Level podcast. Next time, we'll pick up where we left off by digging into how you can improve accountability and capture the profit that's lost when you don't have it in place. Now, if you'd like to go into deeper into anything that we've covered here, or you just need continuing education credits for your professional credential, send us an email at admin at dove-development.net, and we'd be happy to hook you up with a 45-day all-access trial to our complete Leading at the Next Level program at no cost. This full program includes well over 100 hours of digital lessons, complete with slides and action-based assessments, really geared at helping you capture measurable bottom line improvements in your organization. It also includes live lessons each month, followed by Q&A, so we can really help you identify those specific actions that you want to take to lead your team more effectively.